Oh, great. So now we are in module three, uh, lecture 18, um, deep neural networks for natural language processing. In module one, we covered what are NLP applications and tasks. And in module two, uh, we covered uh, ver what word embedding models and recurrent neural networks like RSTM and then the extension sequence to sequence uh, modeling. So now we're in module three. In module three, we will talk about uh, attention and self-attention um, transformer model and the various transformer uh, and extensions um, using like uh, different kinds of self-supervised or unsupervised pre-training. Okay, so what is attention? So this is just an intu intuitive uh, graph trying to explain it. So you know we have, uh, for example, in this small figure, we are showing a variant task. So in the above, uh, so assuming just a calm net, there are human, there are trees, there are sky. So in, and then it summarizes it to be a park. Uh, and then the attention models, I mean, for specifically, uh, it's really trying to focus on uh, very specific parts, I mean, important parts. Uh, so for example, in this case, we'll focus on this combination of uh, trees um, and grass and human together, that region, and tell you a uh, pretty nice, this is a park place. And so we can tell attention is about put uh, some importance on parts of input. Yeah, that's exactly actually how uh, attention um, is. And there are many different mechanisms to implement attention. And we know it's putting importance on a um, like a set of inputs, and um, and then it will use that importance weight to have a weighted recombination of the input of those things you try to attend upon and generate this dynamic summarized representation. And this idea is uh, was proposed first in a sequence to sequence uh, formulation for the machine translation task. And this uh, machine translation formulation, we're trying to predict the force output Q, like, but I don't know what I'm predicting, right? So, so far I have X, Y, Z, uh, the first first three positions are already proposed. So now like I, I'm using this embedding from the Z from the third, then goes to uh, this attention uh, mechanism embedding uh, essentially it's dynamic weight generation layer. It uses the, uh, the third summarized embedding a three output and then two C to kind of try to tell from the input sentence A, B, C, D, which are more important for my next prediction. And then this give a, a weight for each positions, give like different weights. You can fix more, think about it's more almost like a histogram. And then, and then using this histogram, uh, higher importance and lower importance. And then, and then together make a weighted summary, uh, summarization of the input sentence and then generate, generate this uh, dynamically generated new representation to summarize the whole uh, input. So uh, this actually tells you, trying to tell this uh, generation model, decoder model, to generate the next position and um, what are more important in my input sentence. And then this is how I my input sentence when I'm focusing on that part looks like. All right, so then you feed in this regenerated uh, embedding into this generation block plus with the third previous uh, code up that I just gen previous generated. So using the Z and together with this uh, new summarized uh, input representation, you will generate Q. So this is really how it worked uh, in a six to six, sequence to sequence uh, with attention mechanism. It has this really dynamic uh, focus. I mean, I tell you when predicting maybe like a dog, I, I should focus on from 
for example, Germany also that dogs and a dog word, not all the words in that sentence, right? But focus on, on more on the dog related words. Uh, so that's really it, what it really is. Okay, so um, you can almost tell like in the previous page is attention module gives us a weight for each input. And I'm just trying to show you. So this uh, like is English input, there are five elements. When I'm trying to predict the first in this translated Y1, I'm learning the weights. Uh, this using a context vector, this is something I called context vector. So it's a parameterized neural net network module. Just think it, yeah, think that like a black box. And it just apply upon every H embedding from the input that it generating a weight. Here we call that alpha 1, 1, alpha 2, 1. Alpha three one, alpha four one, alpha five one, and then um, it's using that weight uh, to generate the generate the y one, and then for the next step, it's going to use a newly going to generate a, the second set of the weights. So now it's like all this is alpha one two 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 three two and five two. So it really generating report importance for every time step or every element uh, here in this input sentence and then get this uh, in, uh, dynamically generated uh, summary embeddings using the weights and so uh, that's how it, it worked um, the attention what attention used in six to six to mo sequence to sequence mode but you, you can actually tell I mean in this uh, initial formulation and then because it's machine translation, right? So your input space and your output. Is, so when for every output, like a Y2, I'm trying to predict, uh, and this Y2 is in a different space. It's not anything like related to my current sentence. So which, it's not anything in my current language. That, that's what I meant. So which means like input is my current English sentence, output uh, maybe that, just assume it's a German sentence that I want to translate it to. Um, but people push this idea actually to a very interesting formulation called self-attention. And then this kind of revolutionized a lot, many things in natural language processing now. Okay, so self-attention is rather than in this encoder decoder setup, uh, I'm, I'm trying to learn attention for a specific output it's in a different space um, with regard to every element in my input. Okay, now let me just change that output as also my sentence, my, my elements, which is very, very interesting. So I'm trying to like, for example, uh, for this first position there, um, I just try to like see within the whole input sentence, I try to learn the attention weights across every position of my sentence. Uh, when I'm considering the first word there, what other words are important? So I'm just using my current embedding and then to learn a weight uh, with regard to every other positions in my own, in the same sentence. All right, so let's see another example. When I'm uh, reaching the, uh, maybe this is, I'm trying to like, again, learning within my same sentence, which other it's more important, that important weight. So like when you have the, when you focus on the output as the is, and the, uh, that embedding a uh, becomes really important. Uh, so, so on and so forth, and then it's really creating attention layer, mapping from a sequence to itself. And this is called self-attention. And people just then exploiting this self-attention mechanism um, into the extreme. All right, so this is the very, very important model that is now, I mean, providing a many like state of the art performance and many state of other uh, the art architecture, neural architecture models for NLP are all based on this transformer formulation. So essentially it just um, 
like using attention everywhere. It uses attention to encode representation um, of your encode, enco encoder side of the sentences. It uses this as a self attention in your decoder side of the um, of the sentence representation. Then from the encoder to the decoder, that is the tradition. Uh, it's it's extension of the tradition. You know that kind of attention, and um, it's it's from a space to another space. But it's it is uh, the mechanism is very similar how they implement the self attention, and it's also multi hat. So um, we have an input embedding is constructed from self attention. We have output embedding also constructed from self attention. So every position attend to every other position in my same sentence in the same space in the same sentence, and then. Between the input and output, there's also this multi head attention uh, to focus, like where should I focus, to generate that dynamic focus. And so uh, this is uh, uh, from Google Brain, and then the uh, encoder is fixed length. Um, so the, the output side, so the output side using uh, a um, autoregressive formulation for the generation because the output is a generation task, right? Uh, so then this is a sequence to sequence uh, uh, formulation or maybe more generally to say, this is an encoder decoder uh, architecture. And encoder, so there are many, many uh, self-attention layers and decoder, there are many, many self-tension layers. And each encoder decoder that specific layer has a self-attention plus, uh, you can think of self-attention as a block. So each encoder decoder, so this is an encoder layer here, includes a self-attention block and a feed-forward block. And uh, yeah. So the decoder is slightly different, and so it has a self-attention block, a feed-forward block, plus a encoder to decoder attention block, of course, right? It's not just that when you're doing de decoding, generating, you have to pay attention to the input representation. So that's it. So there's encoder side and decoder side. All right, so we talk about transformers and the basic um, uh, basic architectures. Now let's talk about really popular uh, various like um, word models. And it just people are very funny using um, the name all these models from like a Sesame Street. So uh, it's very easy to memorize. I think they're kind of smart strategy. All right, so there are multiple notable pre-trained uh, natural language processing models. So, uh, so here, so the transformer on top of the transformer architecture, uh, people just now um, use them as a, the basic architectures and then to train on um, this uh, enormously large, um, very lightly uh, labeled or unlabeled uh, big, big text corpus like Wikipedia, uh, those um, like Reddit, there are many, many different kinds. So this type of model first trained on those large unsupervised uh, basic language inputs, it's called uh, pre-trained NLP models. And then you can use them on top of your specific NLP task with a very simple fine tuning. And uh, that this, is our, this becomes a norm for the state-of-the-art NLP uh, pipelines. So very uh, classic now, like notable is for like, it's the BERT model uh, and uh, GPT model. Uh, there's also T5, a recent T5. There's also something called Rebutta, um, Albert, uh, XLNet. Um, I think I missed a few, but uh, you got the, the idea. So essentially they are all just exploding the self-attention mechanism. Uh, so, yeah, so this page trying to tell you like more like generating attention weights, and this is more uh, still what we have before. And this page, more the self attention. You can actually tell, I mean, I'm trying to, when I'm trying to predict the, the um, I kind of like predict the store, I have the two, 
uh, emphasized and then store itself, of course, emphasized, right? So it tried to, the self-attention essentially um, learning this uh, like word-to-word -word composition. Yeah, because it trying to learn the weights, right? And then it's then you try to see who and who are more important, and that is essentially means the composition. So it, the composition is not just the store which are neighbor words anymore, because I'm attending to every other word in my sentence, which is actually much longer, and it's also um, yeah, it's actually much longer. So in this case, like to store, I mean that's the composition. This self attention later can learn. All right, so now what is bird? Bird, essentially, so the bird is short for bidirectional encoder representation from transformer. So from the name itself, you can actually tell. Bidirectional encoder representation from transformer. So essentially, uh, bird is just a transformer's encoder stack. Yeah, it's actually very simple, just encoder stack, but bird uh, the reason why it's kind of famous is the the way how it trained it, that that loss or uh, loss formulation. We're going to talk about it later. So first, just from architecture topology perspective, it's just the transformers encoder stack. All right, the, another very very popular and famous architecture or the, like people use a lot I and mean, transformer uh, model is the GPT. Uh, their GPT. Um, like two very get start to get a lot of attention because it's all some kind of claims they made and then recently it's GPT-3 uh, so essentially GPT is a transformers decoder stack so the name short for generative pre-train yeah so it's the gener generated part which is the decoder part right it's also pre-trained it, it's pre-training uh, um, mechanism and also pre-trained on um, many a huge like size of unlabeled data it's it's a it's a humongous model with 1.5 billion parameters so similar as a bird you can also use the pre-trained gpt models for any task and there are many different tasks using this transformer this open ai this gpt in different way so you can use it for classification use it for entailment, um, identification, uh, similarity um, analysis. So you use it for multiple choices task. Uh, I think this is, sorry, so this is more QA, this multiple choice, uh, this formulation. So so you, uh, we can actually think about like context is, uh, yeah, that's exactly here. So context is like a keyword. So a keyword question. And this is the keyword question, and then you really use in every one of this representation, and then together with the answer, because you are learning this kind of attention, right, and self attention. So it will attend to different parts in the attention uh, answer one, answer two, dynamically, and also then, and together this has this uh, dynamic generated context dependent answer one representation answer two representation answer three representation and then uh then you fit in here and hopefully this give you a um, histogram type type of output tell you oh wow so the first dynamically uh, generated representation is more um uh, is more likely so and then this answer one should be my answer yeah, so that's that's actually in fact the most basic question answer, answering uh, architecture is implemented. Uh, uh, all right, uh, let me scratch out the first. Yeah, so this is not for QA. So this multiple choice formulation is for P QA. All right, so now. So we know the architecture, transformer, and variants of transformer. Now let's jump to something really, really interesting is how people train those transformer or variants of transformer models. So before I jump into uh, self-supervised training of uh, transformer models, I want to talk about um, 
it's actually how, how people train this word to vector, mo uh, vector models because this is actually the foundation many people use later to, tra to train transformer models. So um, there are two different kinds of um, loss function people designed to train the word embedding when they started in like 23 when the, the word to vect is the most fundamental task on the text data. So there are two kinds of uh, laws, um, laws formulation, so because it's it's unsupervised, right? So it's unsupervised. I have only my current sentence and I don't know anything else. Then I have to make a hypothesis um, by generating, tell my model, tell my architecture, oh, okay, so this is the good one and this is the bad one. I'm using, giving this type of pseudo generated signals to hopefully to learn good weights for my uh, current architecture. So that's exactly how people did. And so to learn good embeddings, I mean, so like I think in, it's before 2010. Uh, so people just have a sliding window representation um, centered at that specific word. In this case, is word T. I'm trying to learn a good representation for word T by doing what? So I'm just trying to use my left left two neighbors and my right two neighbors to predict um, my the middle words. And and this, yeah, you can actually tell, oh, that's a good formulation, right? And this can learn these dependencies of how my how me it's dependent on oh yeah, dependent from my neighbor, left and right neighbors. So this is the first formulation and they call the CBOW um, representation. And then the next is called the skip grand type of a loss formulation. So I'm using my current middle words to predict my neighbors. It's just like a flip, right? I flip the CBOW into the input and output. I use my middle word, word to predict uh, my neighborhood words. And then using this type of laws, I mean, to cover every possible word in my unsupervised data, and I got a lot of pseudo signals. Yeah. So that's how um, the word to vect uh, a lot of model was predict, and you, the loss, and the uh, positive sample and negative sample are, were constructed back then. All right, so essentially BERT just borrowed that, those ideas, uh, word to vec type of loss formulation, and then, but uh, replace uh, those uh, basic architecture blocks using the self-attention block, transformer block. So here, so I basically, when you have an input I, uh, I went to the park, for example. I mean, what you input, you must out like a certain proportion of uh, the words in your uh, in your input sentence, so so um, yeah. So now this is a good time. So again, so the like we when we talk about uh, recurrent and your network models and recurrent your network models, it's about composition of word embeddings, right? Self attention model, transform model is the same. So here, so you whatever like it's your word in symbolic input, you will first converted it using the word embedding layers into a fixed dimensional vector. And then this, no matter, so the middle or this middle after the word embedding is uh, to compose, to learn how to compose words, okay? So here, so I project each one of them into an embedding. So this mask can be also projected into an embedding. It's a specific embedding in the end, just mask is a special uh, words in my uh, in my diction, right? So now I'm using self attention and then trying to have this dynamic representation of each position. Now I'm using those this and to predict this position, whatever this position as mass should be went, and then whatever this position mass should be the. I'm using neighbors to predict those missing words. It's very similar actually to the safe grand formulation, right? So this is called masked language model generation, and which is really important and then uh, make BERT very uh, kind of notable. All right, so 
BERT essentially is pre-training of this deep bidirectional transformer and model. Uh, so if you still remember autoencoder decoder formulation we talked about before, and this is a special kind if we look at more generally. It uses a special kind of denoising autoencoder formulation because it adds noise in the input and trying to predict um, like the, the input, right? So you have a noisy input to the encoder and then you try to generate not noisy version. And this is called a mask language model. Yeah, mask language model. So the whole intuition is the representation should be robust to the introduction of noise. So the pipeline is normally, okay, I have unlabeled sentences and actually, in fact, the bird in bird representation, it normally have two sentences. So, and in each sentence, you have masked out like uh, tokens, and then you try to represent two sentences together using this transformer block and you try to predict uh, the mask first representation the mask first sentence and the mask second sentence so you can actually tell i mean it's not just within one sentence right it also has sentence to sentence and the reason why this has this two sentence formulation is or maybe two two yeah two sentence formulation is because this is really really good for question answering we just mentioned right so a lot of this question on which is a fundamental nlp task is so you want to have ways to represent context sentence or query sentence you also want to have a way the query sentence immediately how it's attend and uh, to a answer sentence so this is like that's why in bird uh, this type of formulation will act it always has this two sentence type of representation. So you use again, um, not just um, this actually related to then there's also sentence relationship level of predictions and to give um, to the, like a pseudo signals to, to do the pre-training. So for example, two sentences, uh, I just sit next to each other in your unsupervised uh, model you know, your unsupervised data. So that's your positive case. And then you can generate like one sentence is my current sentence. I can just pick a random sentence from the my unsupervised corpus and construct. So that's like S1, sorry, let me change a pen. So this is more like something called the next sentence prediction. So yeah, so I have my current sentence S1 and this is my S2 right besides to me, but I can also have S1 and with something S uh, maybe 100. And so this is my positive case, this is my negative case, right? Because it's next to me, that means these two sentences are semantically related position-wise. And when I'm replacing one of this sentence pair into some random sentence, that's much less semantically relevant. And BERT also use this type of signals to do the pre-training. Okay, so after you have this, the BERT trained very nicely, exploiting various kind of uh, dependencies, uh, like pseudo uh, signals, like pseudo uh, supervised signals to train it. And then you can just use it for many downstream stream tasks. So it can be for name and recognition, question answering, there, there are many, many tasks, I and mean, then you just fine tune it uh, for your current task. So this is called like fine tuning. For example, this is exactly showing this question answer pair. So there's this question fit in, in as a sentence one, uh, answer potential answer fit into uh, sentence two, and then you can together generate a dynamic uh, representation. Then you can replace this this answer part into other answer, all possible answers, and um, and then you combine them together to generate a kind of histogram type of output, which is, is the page I just showed. Um, yeah, let me actually, which is actually here. So this this kind of multiple choices way. So you have context like a query with answer one, uh, query with answer two, query query with onto answer n, and all together. And then you consider all this together, generate a output. So actually, essentially, this is a softmax. This last part is a softmax on your 
set of possible answers. It gives you that soft max out, right? Which one is the most likely? All right. Okay. So uh, we talk about bird and also fine tuning bird on the question answering task. So now let's talk about a, a other type of uh, transformer model and trimmed a different way. So essentially, uh, so there's one model called Albert. It's a light bird. <laughs> so um, it, it's essentially just bird models, but it replaced this, um, this next sentence prediction, which I just mentioned into something called sentence order uh, uh, prediction. So like I said, like you have S1 and S2, you know, they are neighborhood centers in your unsupervised data. Um, so in this basic bird, it's just used this S1 or maybe S2, uh, one of them got replaced into a random one, right? SR. So that's that's in the bird formulation. Uh, but in Albert, they make it more difficult. So so they just flip. So this is the positive and this is the negative in the bird, right? In the Albert, they make S2, S1 as the negative. And which, uh, sorry, it's not, it's not positive, it's actually negative. Change it to a different color. Um, like this, yeah. So, so essentially, so in Albert, this is my negative pair. Uh, this is my positive pair. So it's actually a lot harder task because you still have the S1, S2 embedding, right? But you flip the order. So, so they claim um, this give be learn better uh, semantic meanings because of this better way to uh, formulate a negative uh, sentence pair samples. And then there's um, other variants. It's so for example, let's start, first start from called the transformer XL model. So because the transformer um, essentially using like a fixed lens representation. Um, so, but the issue is like we actually emphasize from the beginning using recurrent neural networks, the reason to use it is because sentences of natural language are uh, variable length, right? So, so far transformers just have a very, very fixed uh, kind of large length. And then hopefully it can represent every possible sentence in English or in other language, then whatever proper numbers and the use set to for your uh, language specific language you want to model. Um, but then people just say, I mean, transformer using this because it's fixed lens, it cannot be too long range. It's just upper bounded by that number. So we really like the recurrent mechanisms uh, before. So uh, can we um, like still have it? So this is exactly something called transform XL. Uh, so, okay, so I cannot, for each inside sentence, I don't need that recurrent mechanism. Uh, how about I just adding this recurrent mechanism among sentences? And that's exactly how this is called extra long transformer. And that's the basic idea of extra, uh, uh, transformer XL. And then um, like this uh, pretty popular notable model called XLNet um, builds up on top of on top of this transformer XL and also propose a, a novel way to train this uh, uh, train this language model. So let's kind of recap. BERT uses this masked uh, language model uh, representation, right? And XLNet revise it. So it it used it revised the architecture into a transformer XL. It also revised this uh, loss formulation into something called permutation language model. Yeah. All right, so then people adding even more noise um, to train, like it's quite notable now, some uh, model architecture called T5. So it's not just mass anymore. There are also like the, a span type of a replacement, a dropping base replacement. And then it, it kind of seems to have really good performance. And this corruption rate, or let's see, maybe noise rate is even, even higher. So it's like a 50 percent is even there. And also the span crop the span, like it's not just one uh, position, it's a span. And it's actually much longer too. So um, in the end, so it seems to be a push, 
pushing just more and more. I want to add more noise. Um, I, we hope our model can still predict output very nicely. Uh, so that seems to be a very good strategy to learn the, the this kind of basic representations of the language itself. Great. So we finished uh, like multiple modules to talk about deep neural networks on one deep gray data. And we talk about um, like what challenge and properties of you know, a natural language data. We talk about many applications like a chatbot, a question answering, natural language uh, instruction, or other basic model, a basic task like sentiment analysis. Uh, and then the different kind of architectures trying to solve those models, like word to vect, and then the composition. Word to vect is the basic representation of words. And then the next level, people like have many tried many things trying to uh, learn how to compose words. So the recurrent neural networks, and then the recent transformer, and then uh, many different kinds of ways to train those, like BERT models, uh, GPT-2, um, like Albert Robata and T5 and uh, XLNet. So uh, this finalized this uh, lecture, uh, lecture 18. Okay, thank you.